Welcome back. Now, security is a concern many of us have. And people are asking, am I safe in my home, especially during this lockdown? Uh, people are wondering if also their offices, their businesses that they've locked, shut down for a while are also safe. Now, our guest, um, Dixon Omodieli Osaji, is the CEO of the Breeze Protection Services Limited, a security. He is a security expert. He started his career as a young soldier at the age of 20 in 1998 and was <laughs> enlisted as a member of the 47th Regular Corps of the Nigerian Army and was also posted to serve in 245 Reconnaissance, oh my goodness, Armored Battalion in Ikom, local government of Cross River State. He was among the brave soldiers that fought in the Bakasi Peninsula War, and he has also attended various military missions. Dixon voluntarily disengaged some years back from services and opted for corporate security services. Now, remember, you can join the conversation, tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Waysho Africa one with the hashtag Waze, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 8038466. Thank you so much for joining us, Dixon. Nice You're looking you. very sharp this Thank evening. <laughs> okay, we're talking security, and it's been a really, really, really huge concern for a lot of us, um, especially with this lockdown where we have an economy that a lot of people thrive on daily income. So people are worried that, I mean, if this continues or if this stretches, this lockdown stretches, we start worrying about people coming to our homes to rob us or breaking our businesses, you know, or... So what is the regular... Um, what's, your, what's your summation of the current situation in terms of security for Nigeria? All right, thank you. Uh, nice being here. Uh, uh, you know, the holiday that uh, struck is just like uh, uh, something unexpected. Uh, we really never expected such compulsory holiday. Absolutely. I was driving down to this studio today and Lagos looks so beautiful. <laughs> you know, the expressway, we're free from traffic and uh, uh, the movement, the journey was so smooth. And I said, wow, how I wish Lagos would continue to be like this. That but was exactly what I said when I was But, uh, you know, uh, the situation warrants that. Uh, now, coming to your question, looking at uh, people being scared about their uh, businesses uh, being uh, altered by criminal elements, uh, they first of all need to have an assurance that uh, the uh, Lagos State uh, security services are capable. Um, however, I think there was no contingency plan in respect of this. Uh, that is why sometimes uh, it's very good for business owners and business uh, uh, enterprise to always look into business continuity planning in the case of an emergency, because this was an emergency situation. And uh, most organizations, I can bet you, they don't have business continuity plan in place. Uh, if you have business continuity plan in place, I think uh, you are not supposed to suffer from any losses within this period of time. Uh, however, uh, we have corporate security uh, uh, agency that are solely responsible uh, for the protection of private properties because the Nigerian police will never come and protect your property. Definitely. You know, they are public uh, servants. Absolutely. And uh, we all also understand that uh, most of these private uh, security uh, guards are solely in charge of security. You know, there are two ways to security. We have the responsive aspect and the proactive aspect. Uh, the corporate uh, security guards are, uh, are proactive and they're why the uh, national security, uh, Nigerian and police, the responsive and, uh, ones. they are the responsive yeah. ones, you know, they, they act after the occurrence. After the, there's an occurrence, uh, yeah. yeah. after the occurrence of an incident. Mm -hmm. But however, uh, we've had one or two reports in some places where, uh, where some uh, hoodlums or criminal elements went and uh, break up the place and still something. It, it, it's surely going to happen in a given okay, environment. Okay, pocket of it should, may yeah. happen. Yeah. But why Why do you think, that, because we've been, there are a lot of um, videos going on on social media where you see some people swimming in Gotha and all that. So I want to think that, from my own perspective, that quite a number of um, security personnel, you know, That's the moving national around. personnel, yeah. Yes, yeah, moving around. So why do we still have incidences of... Okay, of, you see, of, um, violence. Oh, sorry, of, um, of, of theft, 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 or theft, robbery, yeah, or no? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you want to talk about? Because swimming? I feel more secure at this time. Okay, yeah. Why are you talking about swimming? Is it the guy that was swimming in the, in uh, the gutter? Yeah, gutter, yeah. The uh, that was an unprofessional conduct by the soldier, and uh, that is why sometimes uh, we professionals will always advise the government to be very careful in the management of our military. Uh, regrettably, our country just feel that the military is the first resort you send into any crisis. Mm -hmm. That is a very wrong notion. The military is supposed to be the last resort. 
We have the Nigerian police that are solely responsible for internal security. Sorry, I was going to say that. that is, a, is the military responsible for internal or external aggression? The military is responsible for external aggression. Ah, sorry, I really the do police, not know why they are No, you have to get it right. The police are re okay. solely responsible for internal aggression. Okay. Now, when uh, the police are overpowered by the threats, uh, that is when the military uh, can, step, can, can, can step in. Under the okay. command of the CNC, that is the president that orders the military to come on board. Uh, but it's quite regrettable in any given situation you send out the military. And that was what went wrong uh, during the time Boko Haram uh, sprang up in 2009. Uh, the police were supposed to be given the opportunity to try and fail, try and fail, try and fail, so that they could be able to uh, co uh, sustain such a, a threat, national threats. But the government were so quick to send in the military, thinking that the military... And that escalated uh, though. That escalated yeah. the incident, and the military are no longer... Uh, uh, they, 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 the military have to overpower. The Boko Haram, they, they, in fact, let me use the word, see, finish, you know. Mm. They don't even give it down. In the early days... So they should have been the last resort. Oh, sure. We shouldn't in, have yes. used that old arsenal. In the, in, the, in, in the early days, while I was still in service, I, I remember there was an incident taking place in, uh, in uh, Obudu Axis. Uh, it was a communal conflict. conflict. And uh, we were asked to go and disperse that conflict. That was in 1998. You were still in service at Yeah, that I was still in service in 1998. And before we got there, everybody has dispersed. You know, there is this fear about the military. Before the military should come out of the barrack, this incident must have overpowered the uh, police. But it's so, quite so, regrettable this time around. We always push in the military first and... Uh, so, but, but it's, you it's know, happening. now that the police have been given the authority, so to speak, to arrest and all that, but we know that the police are always prone to misuse their okay. legitimate powers. powers. Yeah. So how do you think we can curb this menace? Yeah, I, I, I think uh, uh, f at any given situation, even if it's election, you find out that the police mismanage their powers. Uh, any uh, uh, call up to order, the police mismanage their powers. And uh, I, I would draw that to, to training. You know, training is very essential, you know. And that is why sometimes uh, the curriculum of the police uh, training academy should be revisited. And what are they having in their training academy? And even I think there should be a retraining too. No, yeah, retraining you is. Know, just, not just training yeah, at the police. Yeah, yeah, surely, yeah, 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 training. Like most times, those of them that go for promotion, they have training. Because the truth is that you need to know uh, how to manage disruptive behavior. You understand? because most of our police they just uh, sent into the uh, street and most of them are trigger hungry and before you know it, they press the trigger and says an accidental what, what, discharge. So what, what, what do we do with cases? Okay, I was going home last night and this has happened on two occasions. The police at the Marocco um, um, police station harassing people. Last night it was even bad because I saw them dragging the, the young man by his belt into the police station. There's a lockdown. Everybody's apprehensive, but some people have to come out to go to work. So I am in the press, so once they see press, they're already at a lot, so they let me go. But this young man, I wouldn't know what he's done. So what would, I, maybe, well, how would I have been able to step in? Because when you see a policeman um, manhandling okay. or harassing yeah. a fellow citizen, how are you supposed to react? Okay, you see, uh, first of all, the uh, police needs to understand that they are the friend of the state. And the sole objective of the police is not to harass, it's to protect. But most times they take it as an aggressive uh, procedure, which is very, very wrong. Uh, because whatever the case may be, uh, that's why sometimes I, I'm one of those professionals out here that kick against what we call accidental discharge. There is nothing like accidental discharge, you know. Uh, sometimes you see a policeman shut down a citizen or a Nigerian, and before you know it, they want to play a defense that's an accidental discharge. There is nothing like accidental discharge. That is an intentional discharge. Accidental discharge is only permissible in the war front, whereby your rifle is already ready. But in a civil uh, setting like this, where we have the you civil, would need civil to state, your, yeah. you have to cock your gun, yeah. then you up on the safety, then you press the trigger. Absolutely. That is three processes at the me. same time. Sorry to so that is you. not an accidental discharge. Sorry to cut you. Why yeah. do you think that thrives? Because we see this on a daily basis. I can't count the number of um, videos I've seen today on mm. police brutality. Yeah. Why do you think that is festered? Why do, what, what do you think feeds that kind of behavior? On the part of the government. On the part of the government, the issue is that you know in every incident there should be punishment. Thank you know, you. if you don't have an effective problem. punishment in place, yeah. uh, it's, it's going to be disastrous. Like in the early days, I usually use myself as an example. If you cock a gun against somebody in the early days in the army, once you cock a gun against somebody, it's a dismissal offence. It is presumed or assumed you've killed that person. You dare not cock your gun against any individual, either a soldier, your fellow soldier, or a civilian. So the military discipline on weapon handling is very, very stiff, very, very clear. And that is why... So you don't cases. think that is existent in the police force? What is existence? 
um, the discipline, the kind of the level No, no, the discipline in the military is different from the police force. No, I said, do you don't think that is existing in the police? No, it exists because in the police, when you uh, commit such kind of crime, the police authority will bring you to orderly room and uh, profile charges against you and uh, but, possibly deal with you. But the issue is this now: if we have effective punishment in place, not until a policeman shoots a Nigerian, like what you just told me transpired yesterday, uh, even if the uh, the citizen is, is, is uh, has a disruptive behavior, just what we call management of disruptive behavior. Behavior, you must not use of force is the last resort. Manhandling of any Nigerian is the last resort, and that's why the criminal code is very clear. The criminal code states in uh, uh, section 286 that any person that is not uh, uh, armed and uh, you want to accost such person, even if the person is verbally assaulting minimal. you, you should apply minimal force. force yeah. The only way you can apply uh, maximum force or deadly use of force is when your life is being threatened. You understand? So Nigerians must rise up to the tax to kick against this unprofessional conduct. Okay, so there's conduct. a question from Eddie. It says, we need to be very real. The police are underfunded. We cannot expect too much from them. Oh, sorry, it's a comment. But do you agree with Eddie? I disagree with him. Yes, it, when you say this police are not underfunded, except he said the police are understaffed. If he said the police are understaffed, I will agree with him. Okay. Because uh, we have in Nigeria a state of uh, over 200 million. And we have 375,000 police in 200 with million Nigerians. With 100,000 yes. VIPs. And uh, over 100,000 with VIPs. As I was coming to this studio, I saw a VIP movie with a police escort with Nigerian uh, tax money. So we have to minimize the way we use our police because our police are not well used. Because escort services should be uh, given to other security agencies and let the police face their sole objective. Because when you put the police, uh, uh, when you put the 371,000 police to police this country, we will not experience uh, effective policing. Just assuming uh, you give uh, 371,000 naira to 200 million people, how much will get to you? Ah, <laughs> that's a tall one. Yeah. So what do you think we can do? as citizens to protect ourselves against when we see all this harsh or, or irrational behaviors from our security operators that are supposed to be the one to protect us. How do we handle those kind of situations? Uh, you see, uh, sometimes our citizens are also very funny. I, I, when, when I was in the army, I, I have come across a situation where a citizen, I was with my gun and the citizen was uh, sharpening his cutlass and uh, tells me that he's going to cut me off, you know, that was in uh, Cross River State. Uh, I think something went wrong, he was beating up his wife, and uh, somebody came to call us at the checkpoint. There's also a, a fellow citizen want to kill his, uh, his person. And all of a sudden, we went there just to rescue the woman, and he wanted to kill. Now, but adventure, uh, I was upset with his action, I could have gone him down. So what we should do as citizens, is that we should be very careful in the way we because address the police. Are you uh, aware of the that Nigerians to very, are natural, yeah. no, are you yeah. Yeah. To natural yeah. aggression? Because what you just said now, are you aware of the incidents of the military man that was killed, that there was a reprisal attack, I think, in Worry? Worry, yeah. yeah. I'm aware of the incidents. And uh, I, I got a lot of reports, and I tried to speak to some... Uh, as, as, uh, Walk us through what so. happened, and what do you think should have, you know, should... should because I don't even get it. So there was there was an incident. They killed the military men. Then the military men also Why? now went to the the, 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 the place. There was a reprisal attack. Why? And are they going to be disciplined, you know, for that action? Or who is going to be? Why? You didn't even complete it. There was actually <laughs> they killed about video eight people. Yeah, threatening to rape and maim women. So as how a, do we as solve as that as kind of a problem? The Nigerian Army as it is now, I think they must have set a board of inquiry to inquire into the incident. Definitely they yeah, have, yes. Yeah, what went wrong. I, I saw the video and I tried to speak to some of my colleagues in Wari and uh, I was made to understand that the guy that was killed uh, was trying to like uh, assault the soldier or maybe he was talking to the soldier rudely and that's why Nigerians should be very careful uh, the way they speak to the security agency because you never can tell the mental state of that security personnel or that security that, professional. That the mental so you need to health. also uh, understand that uh, the security agents they are there to protect you. I don't think if you, this guy had seen the soldier and say, Sorry, sir, yes, sir, okay, sir, all right, sir. No soldier is a madman in the street, no policeman is a madman in the street. Because one thing about soldiering is that no soldier wants to be defeated by words or action. You understand? Mm. So you, you might want to try to defeat a soldier by words through what we call uh, verbal judo. You want to attack the soldier verbally. The soldier might not uh, take it funny with you because by his training, he's not trained to be defeated. And that is why the Nigerian government was very careful in projecting these soldiers into internal security. Because when you project them into internal security, mm. these are the results you're going, you're going to get. Because the first training of a soldier is to protect the state and neutralize the enemy. So um, you're saying that we should increase the civic um, orientation, yeah. education of... 
Yeah. It is a bad yeah. thing. Don't you think it should be both ways? No, it should be both ways because the military itself, uh, uh, there's no place or uh, even the this entire security apparatus yeah. of the Nigerian government. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. The Nigerian security apparatus need a, need a, need a kind of uh, revamping or an overhaul to bring them back to a, a, a good state of policing or soldiery because too much of error every day, every time. In the United Kingdom, I was in the airport one day and a lady was being arrested by a British police. She was insulting the British police, slapping him, beating him up. The British police was, was all right, calm. okay, was so calm. But at the end of the day, uh, charges will be brought against the lady yeah. for assaulting an officer of the law. If we allow our security agency to understand that whoever assaults you will be dealt with by the state, they will minimize their actions. But I think they can actually go and uh, um, go and report. It. So this this boils boils down rather to the the fact that we cannot capture the true uh, data of every citizen. Because if I know your house. And you slap me, I'll keep quiet like I don't, I mean, like I'm, you've not done no, anything. you can apprehend. Then the tomorrow, person. I will just bring my lawyer and the policeman to come and arrest you in your house. But because we do not have that proper data capturing of our citizens, we don't know where you live, even when people drop their addresses, it's wrong. So it all ties up to that um, distrust that I think people have. And that's why most times they want to take laws in their hands and just no, deal I with the situation there. I think what he was talking about is... A civilian assaulting a It doesn't police. matter. That's what I'm saying. It okay. is, if the policeman knows that I can find you at the end of the day, I will locate you. He could have even apprehended her at that you time. Know, yeah, I will locate you. Can, you, can, you, can, you can't slap a policeman in the I, checkpoint and go scot And go yeah. They will yeah. yeah. hold you down. He's going to apply a uh, minimum force and section 286 of the uh, criminal code according him that but power. don't you right. think the foundation of this is the recruitment process? No, it's not a recruitment process. I think it's a training process and continued training process and discipline and punishment. You know, if you don't have an effective punishment in place, it's just like in a workplace environment. In any given organization, statistics has proven the fact that 13% of people will steal. And same statistics proves that if those 13 people that steal in the company are not punished, 63% of people will steal. How? And that is why companies begin to fold up and fold up because there is no deterrence measure in place. There is no effective punishment I was talking about recruitment because... Most of the time, when there's advert and all that for recruitment process, a lot of people that turn up, turn out because of an unemployment. Okay, so... Particularly because they don't have a passion for it. I think yeah. we'll, we'll take a quick break. Okay. You'll answer the, the, the reprisal. <laughs> 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 we'll, please stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 